One business deal that has never made sense to me was the Walmart acquisition of Jet.com for $3.3 billion. So I decided to look into it. Using only publicly available information, I tried to recreate what was happening at the time the transaction was made and then what has transpired since. So let's get into the details, starting with the final narrative. The final narrative is that Walmart ultimately got the win. They may have paid a premium, but in the end, they got the e-commerce sales growth that they so desperately needed. And here are some quotes from Walmart CEO, Doug McMillan. He said that uh, the acquisition, uh, he credited the acquisition for jumpstarting the progress we have made the last few years. He said, absolutely would do that all over again. If you look at the trajectory of our business, it changed when we made that acquisition. And I will link to the CNBC interview in the YouTube description. For now, let's look at some of the details behind Jet.com. Jet.com launched in July 2015, and they were sold one year and one month later in August 2016 for $3.3 billion. Jet had raised $820 million, and they were spending that money fast, spending $25 million a month on advertising. And uh, here we have another red flag. Jet.com originally set out to have a $49 annual membership fee. They tossed that to the curb in just three months. So that already tells you there was a problem because they changed their business model three months into operation. One of Jet.com's uh, prized assets was the smart cart dynamic pricing. And so um, the story is that there was an algorithm and that it would reprice a, a shopper's cart based on the items they had added to the cart. And then the idea here was that shoppers could save if the, um, if the cost to Jet.com for fulfilling that order was lower. So if two items being ordered were from the same distribution center, that would lower costs and then Jet.com would pass that cost, that savings onto the shopper. Jet.com also tried to create an advantage by offering savings for using a debit card and for customers agreeing not to return an item. Jet.com was also said to have a, um, an urban and millennial shopper base, although I never saw any data to corroborate this, but that was the story. And Jet.com was on track to reach $1 billion in sales over a year. Um, it was also reported that between 350,000 and 400,000 uh, subscribers or shoppers were being added monthly for Jet.com. Okay, so Jet.com was headed into bankruptcy. They were losing money at a very, very quick rate, and there were only two potential buyers in the market that made any sense. Of course, Walmart is one. The other was Amazon. Amazon was not buying. So Walmart ended up paying $3.3 billion. And so one of the first things that never made any sense to me is, why are you paying $3.3 billion? So really like the highest of the high premiums when this company is going bankrupt if you just let it sit there for a few more months. So Jet.com really had no other options and I'm amazed that they were able to extract this much from Walmart. It really makes Walmart look like amateurs for paying that much for a company that is burning through cash as fast as possible and will be out of business very, very shortly. So originally the story in the press release was that they will maintain distinct brands. But of course, as we know, Jet.com shuttered in May 2020. So we already have a problem here. So the original, the original um, expectation was that Jet.com would continue to operate and it didn't. So that's already one tangible failure that we can identify. Now, continuing on, Jet.com was subsidizing its lower prices. So that's also curious. You know, when you have a company that is getting sales, but they're only doing so because they're really paying for the customers to save, that's a problem. Um, they also could acquire customers. So I talked about adding 350,000 to 400,000 shoppers monthly, but the problem is, is they weren't retaining the customers. And it also, to this day, it's unclear whether Walmart still uses the smart cart dynamic pricing. I couldn't find any information on that. 
What was also happening during this time was this was said to really be an aqua hire. And even at that, I still don't understand, but the word is that Mark Lurie was such a talented and really just uh, know-it-all e-commerce guru that Walmart wanted to bring him in to head their e-commerce and really um, help them catch up with Amazon.com. So in part, this was said to be an aqua hire and that Mark Lurie was one of the prized assets. Well, during Mark Lurie's tenure as CEO of US e-commerce for Walmart, he was purchasing all sorts of digital brands, digital businesses, including Bonobos, including Bare Necessities, Eloqui, Art.com, uh, we have uh, ModCloth. All of these purchases, and I believe there were more, all of these purchases were end up being sold off. So that already, that's another thing where we have a problem because Walmart's actually, it not only is it buying these companies and then investing resources into them, years later, they are closing these companies and selling them at a loss. With Bonobos, the original purchase price was $310 million in 2017, and it was sold in 2023 for $75 million. And then on with ModCloth, it was purchased for 50 to $75 million. It was sold two years later. Also, during Lori's tenure, we saw the rollout of Jet Black. So Jet Black was a high-end text message shopping um, business where, where customers, subscribers could pay $50 a month and then they could text message their shopping orders and then have those delivered. It, is, uh, it was said that this Jet Black had less than a thousand customers, which is actually a good thing because Walmart, or it was posted, and, and this is just, you know, these are reports, but it was posted that uh, Jet Black was losing $15,000 annually per member. Um, and so one other thing I have here on the whiteboard is that uh, there is a quote from Modern Retail, and it says that uh, when Lori first joined, e-commerce was an afterthought. So e-commerce was an afterthought for Walmart. So it stands to reason that if they had put any effort into e-commerce, that they would have seen growth because as it was, they just weren't investing into it, which again gets back into how is Walmart not investing into e-commerce? And really what it looks like is they pinned all their hopes on Mark Lurie. So speaking of Mark Lurie, he had previously sold a company called Quidzy to Amazon. Quidzy consisted primarily of diapers.com, but there was also soap.com and possibly some other entities. So Amazon bought Quidzy for $545 million in 2011, and they ended up shutting it down after seven years because Amazon, of all companies, Amazon could not make it profitable. So presumably, Mark Lurie wasn't offer, offer, operating Quidzy at a profit either. So we have this spending spree on the, on the part of Lori, but all of these additional added brands, none of them are making money. Now, um, we do see Walmart pickup growth, right? Um, we saw grocery pickup added to Walmart, um, but the story, the, the, really the narrative is that Mark Lori gets credit for the grocery pickup, but I read that Walmart.com had already launched grocery pickup before they acquired Jet. Also, the market cap 10X of, of Walmart um, bef when they added Jet.com and then um, and, and to the point of 2021 when I read the article. So at, Walmart did experience growth and then in Q4 of 2020, e-commerce growth was up 79% year over year, over year. But I also have here in parentheses COVID. So, E-commerce growth was up for almost everybody because of COVID. So really we have a, a running along of both e-commerce growth for Walmart and uh, Mark Lurie's tenure. But the problem is, is, are we, is the growth actually because of anything Lurie was doing or is the growth because Walmart actually started to try in, in e-commerce and then we had the benefit of COVID where everybody is ordering online. Uh, notably, Jet.com traffic was 33 million in December 2016, and in December 2019, the traffic was down to 1.4 million, and then, of course, it shut down in the year subsequent. 
Also, um, a, a few other things I want to note. Uh, we have everything on Lori. Also, oh, art.com was another one of Lori's uh, acquisitions that ended up being sold off. Um, also, I want to get into specifics versus generalities because when it comes to Lori, his success is mostly attributed to, uh, to, to general things. But when we look at the specifics, he really has a history of spending other people's money and then losing money. I, I, can't, I couldn't find anywhere where Mark Laurie had generated a profit in his endeavors. So we have a long, we have, Mark Laurie was with, uh, with, with Walmart for, I believe, until 2021 when his five years uh, of contract ran out. And then he, then he left. Another company that was um, sold, added and sold during Lori's tenure was Moose Jaw, which they purchased for $51 million in 2017 and sold in February of 2023. So I think there was one other thing I wanted to get to, but I've covered most of it. The point here is that this deal ends up looking like a total disaster for Walmart. And really, as I read through dozens of different articles and looked at all of the information I could gather, it looked like Walmart, doc, Walmart had no idea what they were doing the whole time. And to go against Doug McMillan's quote, I do not think that there is any way that they would do this all over again. So um, also it was said, by, by Doug McMillan, one thing they wanted to do was, um, he, he, in his quote with the Walmart press release, uh, he wrote, Walmart.com will grow faster and will enable the Jet.com brand to be even more successful in a shorter period of time. It's another jolt of entre entrepreneurial spirit being injected into Walmart. And what I take this to mean is that they thought Lori was going to come in as this whirlwind and just turn things around and he had this new way of doing things that they hadn't figured out. And that this entrepreneurial spirit ended up, uh, they ended up being led into all of these digital brands that they really had no business in being in and they had no plan for. So it was just, not only did we lose from the purchase price, we all, there was also a loss just in dealing with these brands, adding them, bringing them on, possibly pretending to do something with them, and then ultimately taking a loss and selling them. And I don't know the entire portfolio that was added during Lori's tenure, but those are several of them, and I believe there were a few more. One was uh, art.com, and one thing I wanted to note on art.com was it was said that our acquisition strategy um, had two complementary parts, acquiring companies that strengthen walmart.com and jet.com by enhancing both their category expertise and assortment, and then says art.com fits into this part of the strategy, acquiring digital brands that are unique and differentiated, offering products and experiences that you can't find anywhere else. And that is one thing I wanted to get to. Part of the impetus behind adding all of these brands is that these brands would not be available on Amazon. So thereby giving Walmart slash jet.com an advantage. And actually these brands were acquired, I believe to be on jet.com. Now I don't know how long uh, they were, if at all, but that was the idea behind all of these hurried brand acquisitions that ended up not working out whatsoever. And of course, remember, that these brands are being added to jet.com, which was already a loser. And then one more important thing in, where was it? Walmart e-commerce was projected to lose $1 billion in 2019. So this is really three years into Lori's tenure. Walmart e-commerce is still losing money. And this was approximately at 21 to $22 billion, according to sources. We don't know that for sure. But the point is, is that Walmart was still losing money during Lori's tenure after Lori had had time to really take hold and put his stamp on things. And so there was one other thing that I wanted to get to, um, but I think I'm going to leave it there. Oh, yes, the final numbers. So. When Walmart.com, when Walmart acquired Jet.com, they were at $14 billion in e-commerce sales. Amazon was at 99. This was in 2016. 
And then if we look to, where is it? If we look to today, Walmart, and said, Doug McMillan said that in 2023, the company passed the 100 billion mark for e-commerce sales. And then for 2023, Amazon net sales increased to 574 billion, uh, 74.8 billion in 2023. So Amazon at 574.8 and then Walmart at 100 billion. If you look at those numbers and you run those numbers, Walmart is at 17.3% of Amazon sales for their e-commerce division, not Walmart overall, but for the e-commerce, Walmart still stands at about 17.3% of uh, Amazon sales. In 2015, the numbers were 14 billion and 99 billion, and that was at 14.14%. So we really don't see, if we're, if we're looking at Walmart making up ground on Amazon, it doesn't really look like they're making up ground. And then that's what I get to in this uh, one, I have this one square where we look, we're looking at from 2016 to 2019. And this is, I believe, e-commerce market share. Amazon went from 32% to 38%. And then Walmart went to, from 2.6% to 4.7% of the market. So Really, it looks like Amazon has actually gained ground. Of course, I'm pulling numbers from all different types of places. Some sources say one number, another, other sources say others. But when we look at this entire picture, and when we start to look at all of the details from all the different sources, and again, it looks like this deal was a disaster. Not only did they not make money, they wasted time. And there was just so much energy and effort that went into this when you have to ask yourself, if Walmart had just dedicated itself to e-commerce and they had just hired other e-commerce consultants or brought in someone with an e-commerce background, could they have not only matched this, but done much, much better and headed into um, profitability? Again, the narrative was this was a win. I think this was a loss for more than one reason. When you really look at the, at the overarching picture, we have um, energy and effort being diverted. We have money being lost all over the place. This may have set Walmart back. So I will include links to many, many resources that I have, uh, I have used to help construct this research. But the point here is that right now, if you read an article on the Walmart acquisition of jet.com, it's said to be a win. Um, at the time, I was dubious of the acquisition. Now, I think it was even worse than I thought.